Hi guys, it's Sam and I just saw Furiosa. Furiosa was one of my most anticipated movies of the year and it did not fail. If you know one thing about me is that I love Mad Max. It's probably my favorite action post-apocalyptic movie ever. And if you want to know another thing about me is that Anya Taylor-Joy is one of my favorite actresses ever. I think she has one of the prettiest eyes and she has such a charismatic appeal to her. So I had a really, really, really high expectations for Furiosa. But let's just say that the existence of Furiosa in general is a wild card. A new installment to a series that started in 1979 with the latest installment being almost 10 years ago. That's like pretty challenging. Going into the movie, it was really surprising to see that Anya Taylor-Joy appears almost an hour after the movie starts. That's a pretty bold move. But the actress that plays young Furiosa was an excellent choice. Her eyes had the same intensity and the same liveliness that was in Anya Taylor-Joy's eyes. And working with children in general is not the best of choices. I think it's a hit or miss, but this particular character was amazing. So the first half or like an hour into the movie, we learn more about Furiosa as a child. What led her to this point or to Fury Road's point? We can see where she came from, her roots, her motives, and what's her connection to all of this. And that was really well written. Furiosa came to be a very complex character. And as the movie progresses and as her motives heightened and her sense of revenge and hatred heightens, she becomes a scary character. Chris Hemsworth as Dementis was something else. Chris Hemsworth has been cornered into the Thor role for the longest time. And any role that's outside of Thor is pretty forgettable, but this is his best performance. It's just Chris Hemsworth understood the role. He understood the character. He knew that his character was a bit challenging because he is an evil jerk, but at the same time, he has a layer of humor, a layer of emotions, and a layer of ridiculousness. From holding on to his little teddy bear of his children, to having a really over-the-top nose, to zinging some like weird lines throughout the movie, he understood what he had to do. Dementis' character was really well written because we didn't know much about him, just a little bit of the things he wanted to reveal by the end of the movie and the similarities that he drew between his character and Furiosa's character. But we knew enough to understand where this character is coming from and what is his motive. And although he did some atrocious things throughout the movie we can't help but love him although this is a two hour and a half spectacle it has little dialogue specifically coming from our main character Furiosa throughout the movie she speaks very very little she's almost mute but this adds to her character because as I told you in the beginning Anya Taylor-Joy in general her eyes speaks she doesn't have to talk just staring into the camera you can understand the emotions she's going through you can see hatred, you can see rage, you can see revenge, you can see fury in her eyes. And this is what makes her a very unique actress. And the spectrum with which she can be is insane. From the innocence and the simplicity of a character like the one in The Witch, to the complexity and the hatred that exists in Furiosa. She can do it all. And the most important and the most astonishing aspect about the movie was the fighting scenes. Of course, Mad Max Fury Road had some of the best fighting scenes I've ever seen, but so does Furiosa. Throughout the movie, there are a bunch of fighting scenes and all of them are a little bit weird because they are a bit quiet. And it feels like an ASMR fighting thingy. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a spectacle in every single way. But most of them don't have a soundtrack and we're just left with raw sounds. The sounds of explosions, the sounds of people shouting, the sounds of people breathing, the sounds of the wheels of the trucks, the sounds of the wind, the sounds of the sand. And this added a new layer of intimacy with the fighting scenes. Specifically the one in chapter 3, where Furiosa was clinging on the underneath of the truck. This was my favorite fight scene. The amount of details that went into the choreography, the sound editing, the cinematography, the direction, the acting, 
Ugh, I just felt like I loved cinema at that moment. And also these fight scenes highlights the idea how George Miller managed to make us feel his passion, his love and his dedication to the story. Because in some blockbuster movies, the director is kind of stripped away from the emotions that makes him attached to the story. Because of how grand and how huge of a set or a production the movie gets. But no matter how huge the production in Furiosa was, I still felt the passion and and I still felt the obsession with the story. The shifting from young Furiosa to middle-aged Furiosa was seamless. It was so smooth and it was so well made. The actress that played young Furiosa was really similar looking to Anya Taylor-Joy and if you blinked you would miss the transition between both characters. The atmosphere of the movie in general was really unique. It had like kind of a demanding quietness because it had little to minimal soundtrack in general. We could feel what's happening with the characters, we could feel the fight scenes, we could feel the chasing scenes and it felt kind of claustrophobic in the best way possible. Also Tom Burke, the dude from The Souvenir, I loved his acting and I loved his presence in general. When I saw The Souvenir I knew that this is a good actor but I was really glad when I saw him in this movie because I was happy he was getting the chance to prove himself and he did amazing. Jack's character in Furiosa was really well written. He was different from the other characters. For the first time we can see people talking, showing emotions, aligning motives with each other and to build a character like that that would align with Furiosa's character was pretty difficult because she is really really filled with hatred and she has a set goal. It's really hard to convince her to start feeling emotions or to show any vulnerable side. But with this character the director managed to do so and their army of two as Dementis puts it was really exciting to watch. Both of them are crazy, both of them are strong and both of them are on the same team which made all of their fight scenes a little extra spicy. The fight scenes in this movie felt like a video game in the best way possible. I felt like I'm just holding a controller and I'm like shooting up there and going underneath the truck and, and handing something to someone else. It's just amazing. It felt like I'm playing a really high intensity video game like Contra for example with lots of people just going into the frame, you shooting them out of the frame so you can move forward. It was beautiful. The cinematography in this film was very cartoon-like, again in the best way possible. It just was too vibrant, too lively. You could feel the presence of the desert, you could feel the presence of the characters. Some of the grand shots, it was too beautiful to be real. I know there's a lot of CGI and practical effects in the movie, but it still felt like it was shot in real areas and I couldn't differentiate what was what. Also, there's a conversation going around YouTube of people comparing Dune 2 to Furiosa, with lots of them leaning towards Furiosa because it showcases more of a savagery feeling to it and a more of a lively feeling to it. But I just feel like this is an unfair fight because yes, both of them exist in a desert, both of them are blockbuster movies, both of them are a part of a bigger story and both of them are released in the same year. Yeah, these are a lot of similarities, but at the same time, they have very different approaches to how it's made. Both directors tell stories in a completely different way. The Nevernov is more of an observant, atmospheric, grand scheme type of a director. He likes to tell his stories in the most realistic and grounded ways even if it's a crazy story like Dune. This is why the scenes in the desert in Dune 2 is completely different from the scenes in the desert in Furiosa. In Dune 2, you can feel the suffocation, you can feel the scariness and the presence of the desert. It's there, it exists, it breathes, it's dangerous. It felt more realistic and it felt more if we ever had a post-apocalyptic event and we ended up with no water and in the desert, it would feel more like Dune 2, so it's more of a realistic approach. However, in Furiosa, it is like a video game. It's a hyperbole. It's an over-the-top depiction of post-apocalypse and an over-the-top depiction of the desert in general. The desert in Furiosa was more of a playground, a place where the characters can go and run and chase and fight. It didn't have much of danger to it, or not like the one that I felt in Dune 2. So in general, both stories are completely different both depictions are completely different and the visions of both directors, Denis Villeneuve and George Miller, 
are completely different. Final thing I want to talk about, which is pretty spoilery, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, I would suggest clicking off here. But the metaphor of the seed that her mother gave her at the beginning of the movie was one of the most beautiful metaphors I've seen in cinema for a long time. Her mother gave her a part of the land where she belongs, the land of abundance, the place where there is greenery and there is love and there is community. And throughout the movie, we can see how she takes good care of that seed, how it's always a part of her. And the only person she was vulnerable enough to share that secret with and to find hope to go back to her land with was Jack's character. But we all know how that turned out, so that's sad. And when it came to the end of the movie, the very final face-off between Furiosa and Dementis, this was the climax of the movie. I thought of a lot of endings for both characters, but the one that happened in the movie was the best. I thought of him being decapitated or being chased off or being killed or being shot. But all of these are just too predictable of an ending in general. And I love how the narrator told us that she could have done all of that. But the way that she chose to get rid of that character was brilliant, excellent writing. Which is basically she planted the seed into his body so there is a beautiful tree that came out of a slowly dying man. The roots of this tree is feasting and feeding onto his interiors and it's such a beautiful imagery because it showed us that beautiful things can come out of hatred or hatred can at some point be flourished and turned into something that's more peaceful and hopeful. And the face-off that happened at the end of the movie was probably my second favorite shot of the movie because it's just the payoff. And the Mentis's part of the dialogue was really well written, explaining to her that they are very similar characters, that they went through the same thing and that there is no hope for both of them. And we are left thinking what would her character do? Because yes, we saw a little bit of her softer side with Jack's character, but we have to understand that he killed off Jack by getting him eaten up by dogs and he crucified and killed her mother and burned her alive. So the writing of how she actually took her revenge and avenged both deaths was very well written. These are my thoughts on Furiosa. I loved it. If you have seen it, please let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts and see you in my next video. Bye!